and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. First, I want to start out by saying how great it was to join so many of you in our live Zoom Easter evening Emmaus service last Sunday night, seeing so many of you and listening to the several brief conversations that were taking place prior to worship as many of you checked in with one another was emotionally powerful for me, as I'm sure it was for one another as well. Pastor Gail and Peyton and I are continuing to talk about resourcing the Zoom platform for future worship consideration. As exciting as that prospect is, I want to be clear that we will continue to release our daily devotions and Sunday worship services in the same email and Facebook method as we have throughout the quarantine thus far. The reason for this is that nearly 100% of the congregation has email. And so we are then able to have the highest likelihood of providing a worshipful experience to everyone in the church that way. That nearly 100% mark falls off for those in the church with Facebook, which makes choosing Facebook Live as a worship method less comprehensive. And though we were certainly excited to see 68 different devices log in for the Emmaus service, Zoom accounts and the ease of access and operating Zoom for members and visitors throughout the congregation falls off even further from that 100% mark. So just as we did for the Emmaus Easter evening worship service with communion, as we continue discussing and exploring new ideas and resources to further remain connected and gathered in God's grace during this pandemic, any new opportunity that we make available will be for now in addition to our emailed service and devotionals. I want to again thank Peyton and all of the staff and several of our volunteers for their passion and their diligent efforts of continuing to serve you and God as we remain church together. So now for our devotional today on Thursday. Uh, I was especially moved earlier this week by an article that I read from Dr. Sasha, uh, Dr. Sasha Shilkut. Dr. Shilkut is a Christian cardiac anesthesiologist and a mother of four who is working on the front lines in her care for patients during this COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Shilkut shares the following thoughts. As both a leader of a healthcare team and as a parent, I am facing many unknowns as we navigate the rapidly changing response to this COVID-19 virus. I assume like you, myself, both of us, together we are all experiencing fear, anxiety, and perhaps grief during this time. As a medical professional and as a believer in Jesus Christ, I am doing my best to educate people on what we know is true about COVID-19 and to encourage those in my community during this time. She writes, as Christians, I think we bear a certain responsibility during this pandemic. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. We are not to instill fear or to incite panic, but to calmly and confidently walk in God's authority loving and comforting those he puts in our path. She says, we have a responsibility to be alerted and educated, to be prepared and to be examples for our loved ones. And that as the virus continues to spread, let's all do our part to make sure we're spreading truth and love, not fear and uncertainty. What a powerful conviction of faith from one of our sisters in the church. A proclamation from a brilliant light that is shining brightly in the face of darkness. I mentioned in one of my previous messages to you from down here in the basement, how those who do not enjoy the blessings of Christian faith must feel like surviving this pandemic and bringing it to an end all rests upon their shoulders. You and I, we celebrate and are comforted by a different word, a word of hope and a word of triumphant truth that God is still in control and prayer can and will make a difference. So I seek to bolster your efforts of prayer today. 
pray without ceasing. Pray especially for our local health care workers who are putting their own safety in a harm's way every day. Many of them have families and children at home who they are worried about exposing the virus to and are struggling to balance work and home life right now with their own well-being. Pray for all those who are working on the front lines, from grocery store clerks to pharmacists to law enforcement and other public servants. There are so many people continuing to go to work every day in order to care for the sick and to keep those who are well safe. Pray for those of us who are battling the virus, that they would be healed. Pray for our nation's leaders and other government officials that they would be wise in their decision making. Pray for those who have lost a loved one to this virus, that they would be comforted by God's love and given peace. Pray for our nation, for the heart and salvation of every single person who is seeking to turn to God for strength right now, who are seeking to turn to God for clarity, seeking to turn to God, that God would be a near presence in their life right now. I want to close with just a few more words of encouragement from Dr. Shilkut, words that give me strength, and I'm sure that they will for you as well. She reminds us that our hope is in Christ who equips those of us in medicine to help our communities. She says, as a Christian and as a physician, I am confident in the knowledge that we have medicine and we have faith, that we have in medicine and in the faith, we have both the gifts of Christ. These are the things that help keep her in clear conscience and maintain her own well-being, and it helps get her through each day. She says, I know we are well trained to care for the rapidly evolving illness, and I have faith knowing that we will survive this. We have a peace that passes all understanding, and right now, when there are so many things that we cannot predict, God is a great comfort for me. Wow. In addition to all that we are doing these days to try and achieve our safekeeping, please be sure to continue to pray. Pray for Dr. Shilkut and all of the world's medical care providers. Pray for the scientists and the researchers who are working to battle against this and every other disease that causes suffering and pain. Pray for the Christian church and disciples around the world that like our sister Sasha, we continue to be a presence of brilliant light in each of our own ways and daily opportunities. Most certainly you are in my prayers. Prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of strength and safekeeping, and prayers of my joy for you. Prayers of when the day will come when we get to be with one another again, that God would certainly bless you and keep you safe. You have my heart. And again, until we're together, God bless you. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we worship you and adore you because you have raised your son from the dead and made him to be Lord over all things in heaven and earth. We ask that you fill us with confidence that in the risen Christ, we can overcome all threats to the reality of your love for us, especially destroying us, the fear that death separates us from your mercy. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this season of spring, for the sun shining warmly, for moisture that helps feed the earth and give us water for the beautiful blooms, for the vibrant colors, for the blue skies, for the longer days of warmth, and for joy that comes into our lives when we see signs of resurrection throughout the earth. We thank you and we praise you for that, Lord. We pray on this day, this in these days after Easter, like the disciples that were hiding in the upper room with the doors closed, we pray for all, for many who are behind closed doors this day, Lord, for those who are struggling with the closed doors. 
for those who are lonely and don't have others to speak to or to help bring them up. We pray that your presence surround them. For those who are fighting addictions, Lord, give them your strength and your courage to keep going one step at a time, one moment at a time, one day at a time. For those suffering with mental health issues and for those who live with them, be with them, Lord. Give them the support and the presence and the courage they need for the one who's not well to seek help and for those who are around them to have the wisdom to know what to do. For those who are struggling with their own illness, Lord, we pray for your presence to be with them and that your healing grace be upon them. For those who are mourning, who are sad because they have lost someone they love or they've lost the life that they enjoyed, Give them your grace and your strength, Lord, to get through these days. For those who are fearful, oh, there's many and various reasons to be afraid, Lord, in these days. But we pray that in you we have our peace and we have our strength and we know which way to turn for what, for our needs daily and for our eternal needs. We thank you, Lord, for all the many people who are putting their lives on the line during this COVID-19 crisis. We pray for those who are in the medical personnel and on the front lines working with patients. We pray for all of those who are in the hospital, uh, those who are cleaning the rooms, those who are welcoming the patients in. We pray for those who are working with the homeless and those who are working with the vulnerable population. We pray for all of our essential personnel who are out there and putting their lives at risk for store clerks, for truck drivers, for all the many people who are still out in the public. Give them the wisdom to know how to protect themselves and give those in charge, the managers, the courage to work well for their folks who are working for them. Lord, we pray for our leaders, our elected leaders, our political leaders, that they serve with wisdom, with discernment, with compassion, helping others to do the best that we all can in order to help overcome this virus. Lord, we pray for those who are now unemployed or underemployed. We pray for those who are scared but wondering where their next paycheck is going to come. And Lord, we thank you for our community of Christ Lutheran, for the church who continues to reach out while not being out. We thank you for the many in this community who are calling one another, who are FaceTiming with one another, who are emailing one another, who are offering help in the ways that they can give it by making face masks, by giving donations, by serious prayer. We thank you for all of these prayers, Lord, and we take time now to pray for those who are on our mind and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift these and all of our prayers up to you, O Lord, with a sure confidence that you have heard them and that you are answered them in your time and in your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.